and welcome to this video that is a technical guide on how to automate QGIS using the Python console. That might sound a wee bit ooh, scary and technical, but really it's rather easy. And anyone that has worked with GeoData knows that there's a lot of annoying household work with moving data and reprojecting and so on. And that's what we're going to talk about. So this uh, video here is really because that I'm working on a lecture video about using QGIS to find locations for something or other. And um, I wanted to take some data from Natural Earth and then clip it out for a region around Denmark and then change the projection to something with meters as units because I'm going to use a buffer tool. And even though it's only four layers, there's a lot of, uh, I thought, okay, why not just use this to demonstrate how to do automation? In QGIS, there's really three or four ways of doing automation depending on how you count. And um, one is to use the visual model builder. So you can use this tool to visually connect a lot of tools of individual processing tools together so to do something rather complex. That's really useful if you have, as I often work with a project and then there's some other people on this project that might not have the complete insight into how the geodata processing is. So I can make a tool in this visual model builder and give it to that person and then they can run it when they need. So it's a good tool for sharing complex analysis. Um, one of the downsides is it's not really good for iterations. So you have a folder with a lot of files and you have to do some processing of all of those files, then that's not really a good um, solution. Then there is the batch processor, which can take a lot of files and then do a single process on them. Um, so it's not really good for doing complex things. And the iteration is a wee bit tedious. You have to more or less hand code each iteration and then it's a question about how much a time saver that is. Um, so yeah, well, it, it's okay, but not quite um, there. And there's something that's not QGIS, but something I use a lot, which is basically just a Python notebook. I use, um, often I use Anaconda or, or Google's Colab. Go, Google Colab is nice because I can basically just share my notebook in GitHub or on the drive and then people can run whatever I've set up in it. So it's a it's a nice way of, do, of, of doing shareable complex things with iterations in it. Um, and as it doesn't have all of the QGIS things, so if you're really used to doing QGIS and that's what you want to do, nah. Um, but the good side, upside is that it has, in Python, there's lots of libraries that can do similar things. So Shapely, Fiona, GeoPandas, just to me, name some of those I really commonly use and lots of others that can do not quite what QGIS can, but really, really close. So for many processing that I do regularly, I typically use a Google Colab and put it there for sharing. And then finally, there's what I'll be talking about today, namely the Python console. So. In QGIS, there's a little console, and then you can run individual Python commands or even Python scripts. So that's a um, that's a nice tool. It's really good for doing running iterations of all the files in a folder, um, and you can also do really complex things. There's a bit of a a learning curve on it. It's but it's not that bad as I will demonstrate. You can get get really really far relatively easy. So um, so let's look at, at how this is done. But before that, um, there is some preconditions. Automation is only fun if you can use it again and again and again. I mean, there's not much fun in doing automation for a one-off. So in order to be able to do, use and reuse your automations, um, have a fixed file structure. So 
I have something like I have a GIS folder and then there are some shared data and underneath that I have my project folders. And then it's, what I can do is in QGIS, I can create, I, when I open a project, so create a project file in a folder, then that becomes my home and it automatically sets a lot of variables that points to this structure. So I don't have to worry about that. So let's uh, look at it in this uh, situation here. So I have um, downloaded some data from, um, from Natural Earth, covered how I do that in another video. And I have created a file structure on my hard drive. So just to keep it simple, I have made a little demo folder and there I have a shared data folder for data used in many projects. Then I will have a project folder where I have my individual projects. In this case, we'll be looking at this um, clipping project. And there I will have typically created a temporary data folder. And specifically in this case, under my temp data, I've created a new folder, Natural Earth, where I have unzipped all my data from Natural Earth. So the idea is that I, in my automation, can run over all of those or iterate over all of those files that are down in this folder. So that's the, the preconditions. Think about creating a, um, a structure that you can use again and again, and then just try and stick to that. It just makes life much, much easier. So, oh, and QGIS. Um, da -da 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 -da. And um, so the way we set this home directory, so it knows what we're working on, is to go down and find where your data is going to be. So in my case, it's down under my D drive, in my demo, in my projects, in this clip folder that so that's the structure I showed you before. So here I want to save a project. So in project, I'll do a save as and it remembers where I've been. So that's fine in my clipping project and I'll just call it a clipping project like that. The name of the project is not that important. Um, naming your data files is of course important when you are doing automation. But the only thing we really did with this was now we can see we have this project home up here, which is that structure that I've just looked at. So automatically I get this and I don't have to worry where on my hard drive. And especially because I sometimes work on Linux and sometimes on Mac computers, sometimes on Windows. It's, you know, get, make, making things simple is really important. So using the project home as my working space makes life much, much easier. So I can forget all about what I have on my different hard drive and all those things. I can just concentrate on my project home, which makes it nice. Then I will, um, in this, uh, my project home, I will create a new geo package, which I will also call um, clip project and in that I will make a layer called frame so that's the frame that I'm going to um, use for my clipping and that's going to be a polygon and it's going to have a um, this projection this lambda that's modal equal error I don't need any attributes because I'm just using it for clipping so now I've got that and I want to let's use Google OpenStreetMap to you know get a feeling of where I am, define my area somewhere around here. And I'll just because I like my area to be nice and square in my final output projection. So I'll just change the projection of this data set to my modal here, Lambert. And that's fine. The rest of the world starts to look strange, but the part that I'm looking on is nice. And from this layer here, I want to drag in my frame and set that in. Might as well just change how it looks. That. 
and bring it into edit mode, create a feature. And I'll be using um, this shape to digitalization that introduced this in another video. But these are really nice tools if you want to create a perfect circle or rectangle or something like that. I want to create a rectangle by extent. And let's say I want something like um, this. Fine. So now I have my frame toggle out of editing save the changes so now i'm really ready to do my automation and at this part you might get a wee bit oh dear how do we do all of this but there's some there's some tricks to make it easier uh, one of them is that all of these processing tools so if you go to the processing toolbar they can really be a help in automating your process. So what we do is that we in QGIS, go to our processing toolbar, choose tools. And what I want to do, first of all, is I want to clip my, now, matter of fact, first I want to take this frame I have. So this frame, because it's, going to be used to clip in another projection and it is created, I need to densify it. It's basically a question about keeping it as a square rather than having it walk around, cover that in another video. Um, so I want to do a densify of this. So I'll do a densify by interval. So basically I'll be putting a vertex for each, in this case, do a kilometer, each kilometer around here, I'll do a vertex test to make the projection, reprojection work easier. So do this and I will use, I won't use this tool up here to point to my files, but I'll go over here and I'll go to browse for layer and I'll go in my project home and I will go in my, and I'll choose my frame and I'll change this to one kilometer and my output is going to be a geo package, just because that's fun. And it's going to be a temporary one, so I'll stare it down in this and I'll just call it temp. Like that. So that's stored. And I will call this frame this. Okay, so now I have my densified frame, all of this set up. And I could just run this tool, but the trick is not to do that because we want to automate, we want to be able to do it all again. Um, so I won't, um, I won't run the tool, but I'll go down in this advanced here. That's only the later version of QGIS, so make sure that you are updated there. And then I'll say copy Python command. Now I'll go in my text editor and I'll just paste it in. So this is um, the console command. I could put this into the console and run it directly. But I want to use it as the basis of my work. So I'll just break the lines here so we can see uh, approximately what it looks like. What happened there? Um, it has a series of parameters that I want to uh, break up here. So, it's a more. So basically, this tool has three different um, parameters for it, and it's filled out already. So we have we have the input, our density, so one per one thousand meters, and my output data. So that's basically the, the, how that tool works. I can also um, ask for help on this tool in QGIS. So uh, if I um, remember what this tool is called, it's called Native Densify Interval. All of this doing here, I'll just, maybe I'll just take all of this. Um, 
and copy that. Go into QGIS. So was that dialog box. The Python console is up in um, the plugin. So Python console. And here, down here, I can type a command. Okay, so this is the first part of the command. I want to change this run to a um, get help. So let's change that run command to uh, algorithm help and get rid of these. Like that. If I notice, run this, you can see that I get a description of what the tool is, what the input parameters are, and so on. So I can also get basically by changing that run command to a algorithm help, I can have an information about which parameters the tool takes and so on. But really, typically, you don't need to do that because you can use this, um, this copied paste version of the individual tool. So basically, this was the densifier. Once I've made my densifier, what I want to do is that I want to use it to clip my natural earth data set. So back in QGIS, might as well get rid of that for now. I want to make a clip. And again, there it doesn't really matter which, which files are used because I'll be changing all of these in a moment. So um, use the clip tool. Um, I will browse for my layer. So that's going to be a frame. And my, oh, so that's, this one's going to be my frame. And the layer that I'm going to clip is going to be one of these from my um, temporary natural earth. And let's start with the coastline. Don't want to run it. And my output, I'm going to just to you show you that also. I'm going to save this as a shape file. So it's coming from a shape file and it's going to be a clip shape file that I will be placing in my temporary folder and just to for the scripting. Call it coastline. And there I will be changing all this in a moment. And then again, I go in and copy it, the Python, go in my notebook or my coding environment here. And again, there I'll just split up these parameters so it's easier to see what's going on. And oh, really? so each time there's a comma, it's a new parameter. So um, here we can have it with. Uh, Uh, these a bit just to make it easier to read. Oh, that's one in debt too much. Uh, um, so these, so this is my densifier. This is my clip, and the last tool I needed was my reproject. So. Don't need to do, use this tool anymore and just do a reproject. Reproject. Oh. Um, go away thing. A reproject layer. And it's going to take one of those shape files and it's going to save the output into my permanent Jude package file. So again, there I'll be using. Um, this pigger to go down and find my data doesn't it's not going to be one of these it's going to be the clip version I'll turn to that in a moment um, and I'm going to change the projection to this Lambert as Moodle and I'm going to save my part data to a geo package so this one and I will call it coast coastline and again, the same trick, I won't run the tool, just copy the Python code and paste that in. 
and again there split the parameters so you can see what's going on and uh, yeah so um you see this this one is a really bit long one so you probably didn't want to type that in yourself so this is basically um how our three tools that we're going to be using so i basically just used the graphical user interface to generate a template for what i want to do and then i'm going to wrap this template in so another template which is what i normally just run when i do a process so once we have created our template of what we want to do we can wrap it into a template of scripts we use in basically all our um, coding so this is um a header that i often use in my project so basically we say that we're going to have a project geo package name so that's what i'm going to call it here and that's going to reference to this instance of home path so when q gets these two things relates to the fact that i have this home project home so that's my home path and then I'll be referencing to this geo package file. So this clip project geo, geo package there. So that's basically what this is referencing to. Then I create a variable that points to the geo package with the extension on it. And this is where all of this magic really comes. So there's two pieces of really important magic. That's the use of the project instance home path. And there's the use of the hyphen library operation system in this case i'm using the path join so i'm connecting building up paths of to a file name and because that i want this project to be able to run on a mac computer or ubuntu computer or windows computer i can't hard code backslashes and front slashes or whatever they call the other way around depending on whether it's a windows or mac computer but this operation system path really takes care of this for me so this is one of those libraries that just when you do a lot of automation then this is one of the life saver um and it, it's basically there is this um this library here and you can read through it and that's it's not that much but there's a lot of putting paths together and things like that that is really useful so that's the first part of it. Then um, somewhere down there, I have hidden the next part of it. So um, remember from before, the first thing we did was we did identify. Here we have this long variable name and a long variable name. And what I want to do is that I want to replace those long variable names or strings, literal strings, with variables. So my input for my identifier is going to be my project geo package and the frame so that frame i created before and the output of it is going to be in my temp geo package and it's called frame dense so that's the next step of it then comes the next part of magic that is there is a library os list directory which lists all the files in a specific directory and what i do is i say if it ends with so if the each file, the extension of the file is .shape, it will take that file name and save into a list of files to process. So this piece of the code runs through this folder under the temp directory called natural earth, finds all the files called .shape and adds them to a list. So the output would be something like this. And you could also, if you don't have so many files or you just you know, want to do it easier on yourself, you can just write in a list, uh, so a hard bracket, and then the parameters along as you go. That's a list in Python. So now we have a list of all the files we want to process. Nice way thing with this one is that I can just put another lot of files in it, and they will also be processed. This one may be easier to make the first time. Then there is basically running through. So this is a for loop. In Python, so we want for take for each file in our list, 
So basically for this and this and this, we take and run a clip where we take the file name and said, okay, this, this file, so natural earth one to 10 million coastline in the input directory, which was our temporary natural earth. So up here, take that, clip it with our densified frame and put the output into my temporary folder. So this one and call it the same as it was called originally. So when this is finished, I will have all the same files in my temporary folder that I had in my input folder, but or natural earth folder, but this time they've been clipped. So that's what that's there. And then the final step is basically to take them and then reproject them. So run this reproject, which was this tool here. Again, all I've done is I replaced those long file names of the variables that all relate to my folders home path. So if I was running this on an R folder, no problem. I didn't have to change any of the code. So run from my temporary, that's where I put my output there. So this is the same as this. This is the coordinate system I want. This is a transformation from the input to the output. That was this long thing. You don't want to type that yourself. That's why it's nice to use the user interface of the tools to generate these paths. And then save it into my geo package. And the only magic here is that I'm skipping off so this split text, takes the text here and splits it at the dot. So I just get the natural earth coastline without the dot shape in my geo package. So that's really what's to it is relatively simple. Just to take your parts that you generated using the Mercury news interface and then put them into a basic Python template. And doesn't have to be really advanced. In this case, the only thing is it has a list files in a directory and it has a for loop. That's only Python specific in this. So it's really, really, really basic. So now I can take all of this. I can copy it. I could go over in QGIS and I can go to my plugins, find my Python um, console, paste in my code. And if all goes well, cross fingers, whatever, I'll press the run. And ah, I made a little mistake. I clicked too much. I got, forgot that part of it. Get rid of that. And then let's run it code. And this time it run. And the magic is that now up in my temporary folder, we can see I have all these files. So down in natural earth, this is where the original ones. These are the clipped ones. And up in my project, I have the clipped and projected ones. So I can now take all of these files, drag them in, and they locate themselves neatly inside my frame. So basically doing um, this type of automation is really, really useful. Um, there's not so much to it really. Um, I've used the processing tool to learn what the parameters were. So run the tool as I would interactively in QGIS. So run the tool. And once I've run the tool, so I can go to history, I can uh, nah, uh, I can copy the, um, the parameters from it as I did. And then I don't have to worry about that. So that was was generated. These co codes. Then you could also use this algorithm help if you wanted to read more about the parameters. Then it's important that you use a project folder so that you save a project file in your folder. So that's why this one is project home. So I don't have to worry about what the path name is. QGIS will manage that for me. 
So using this home park is really practical so that I can use the same automation in different projects. And that's what makes automation nice. Then I use a simple for something in list. So in my code, I had this example where I run through all of my files. So this for file in files of process basically runs through all my files in my list and does some processing on it. And then finally, the only really hyphenous thing you have to learn is, you know, understand this uh, library, this OS path that because, so we use that our automation can run on both Windows and Mac and Ubuntu or whatever, because this library takes is all that hassle about how the structure of a file name is in different operation systems takes it out of the equation makes life much easier and then run it all and you have a uh, nice little uh, result in your QGIS that um, that has all of the files clipped projected in maximum fractions of a you know the time you had to do it manually should say I normally don't use memory uh, la layers, so temporary scratch layers for this type. If you have really big files, it might be a good idea, but it just makes all of this scripting a bit more complicated because you can't really control what the files are called and then you have to use a rename function. That is luckily a rename function in, um, in the Python, but that's basically it. Um, hope you liked the video. Hope to see you in another one. Bye.